Joining me for this discussion is retired Major Adib Bayer Deleke. He is a supply chain and security expert in the U.S. Army. It's good to have you join us right it's now. Good to see you. Thank again, you very sir. much. Good to see you. Yes, sir. Very good. Now, when it comes to the issue of pipeline vandalism or pipeline explosion, it is not new to Nigeria. We've had it over and over and over again. And then when it, when it happens, there are always accusations and counter accusations. No, it was the oil company. No, it was, you know, militants and all of that, or maybe vandals and so on. But when it, the security of pipelines in Nigeria has remained a very elusive, you know, assignment that uh, the government has not been able to handle. Why, why, why so, if I have to ask? So, uh, from my knowledge and understanding of uh, you know, pipeline vandalism and some of the research has been done. You know, most of the oil spillage that's going on in the Niger Delta area, about 28% of it actually comes from vandalism. And these things are not cheap, you know, to actually tackle on the major pipelines of NNPC or other major uh, oil and gas companies and prime much is, is not an endeavor uh, that is done by, that can be attributed to, you know, poverty or whatnot. And I think this thing is kind of carried out with a concerted effort of uh, organized, um, that has political and economic ramifications. So it's not to be somebody that is deep pockets, that has a political, uh, you know, kind of influence that can actually carry out such a thing. So, and, and more importantly, I think this thing is even more uh, kind of permeable in an environment in which, in a community that they've already felt neglected and marginalized. So it is easier to actually convince them that, look, this is a, a noble thing to do and it's probably the best in our own best interest. But in the process of doing that, of course, as you've seen on the news, you know, it causes death, environmental issues and whatnot. It drops the, you know, it has the economic impact as well. So, and on the security part, this thing is not, <laughs> it's a complex issue. Yeah. Complex. It, and, uh, it, that is why Nigerians sit down and wonder. We are not, Nigeria is not the only oil producing country in the that's world. That's correct. When yeah. it comes to land mass of countries producing oil. Nigeria is not the, so, so that if, in case it's going to be that we have a very large spread, a very wide spread of uh, oil pipeline network and all of that. Nigeria is not the one with the highest of all of that. that is but it is in Nigeria we often hear this vandalism and, and some of this recurrence. Yeah, because you know, there is a social dynamics to it, which okay. leads to political dynamics, which is a criminal, there's a criminality part of it as well. But the, I've always, uh, you know, one of my mantra is that number one, that Nigeria number one problem is security, and this can actually fall down the same umbrella. You know, different the pipelines that emanates from the the Niger Delta area to other part of the, the country should not be something that is public. Is a, should not be a public information, and most of this pipeline actually goes through some very thick and ungodly area of Nigeria, and they shouldn't be having. Most of these things should not be habitable. So now you have people over there going over there, you know, creating havoc, and and with some some of these things cannot be evenly, you know, monitored by technology. So when this thing happens, it takes time and time before companies, oil companies, the energy takes whatever happens. Exactly, mm -hmm. and so and it, and unfortunately, when they go over there, they have insert ver uh, valves in this thing. By the time those guys repair it, of course, this oil is being diverted some something else before they realize that no, the oil is being pumped, it's not reaching the. The destination. So okay. it is a security issue. It cannot be, I mean, using manpower might not be able to solve it because when you remove manpower to secure pipeline, you kind of, de you know, depriving other areas of Nigeria that need uh, okay. uh, adequate security. Attention. All right. L let's leave it here for now, Major Adebaya Deleke. It's nice to have you join us, really. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Right. Well, joining me for this discussion is retired uh, Major Adebayo Adeleke. He is a supply chain and security expert, U.S. Army. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning, ma'am. Now, we can't deny the fact that uh, this problem has been with us for a while now, and uh, the government has one way or the other tried to uh, see, find a solution to it, but then it seems uh, it's uh, such a complex issue. It is, uh, because the, it has multi dimension to it, uh, both economic, political, and criminality to it. But the most thing is that, just like any other country, when you vandalize a pipeline, there is a reason behind it. For most advanced economies, it's always in protest of uh, environmental laws or due to infringement of or land encroachment. But in the case of Nigeria, it's used for money and you know fraud. So we haven't actually dealt with the root? Not, not at all. The root cause, we've only been dealing with the symptoms. So they are, the root cause has to do with securing, because people that have been recruited actually to, to do the vandalization actually are for the communities. So how do we help, how do we make sure that this doesn't repeat itself is by 
by securing those communities. And how do we by securing those communities? It's by making sure that they are not marginalized, they are being taken care of, they're being developed. So imagine in uh, Oyimbo area, whereby they have oil spillages over there, and those areas have been cleaned up, they have schools, they have running water. So there is no reason why some of these people will actually aid those folks in but, doing But then the government, you know, uh, interfaces with uh, some of uh, the opinion leaders in, in that, uh, com in such communities. You talk about the traditional rulers and all of those. How much impact does it mean that they are not doing their job uh, with educating the people? I, I won't go that far, but at the same time, I'm not going to say that these uh, community leaders are not doing their their job, but what I know of, and this has been researched and backed, is the fact that the trickle-down economics is not getting to the people that really matters. So the, the, the community leaders are getting the necessary resources, but for some strange reason, these resources are not getting to the people that really need it, not getting to the farmers, the fishers, and those are the people that are susceptible to these uh, oil spillages, and the reason why some of those, that are know, they actually know where those pipelines are. So it is important that whatever trickle-down economics, or whatever method of uh, resource allocation that's being used in the communities is getting to the people that's, that's needed, not to the community leaders and the you know, uh, decision makers of those communities, but to also to the people that really do need it, because those are the people that actually do have been affected by this situation. Now, another aspect is the question of, has uh, the government really put in place the legal and institutional framework that will ensure that whatever um, plan it has put in place works? Absolutely not, because this is part of maintaining, because obviously they've been doing this Niger Delta, uh, you know, this so-called scheme for quite some time now, but we see little result. He has little little result. So there is no, and I don't believe the framework is working. It's not being institutionalized. If it has been institutionalized, there should be a way of maintaining it and making sure there's a check and balance to it. If there is a check and balance to it, some of these things should have been eliminated a long time ago. All right, thank you so much for your time on thank TVC you, Breakfast. Joining me for this discussion is a retired Major uh, Adebayo Adeleke, he is a supply chain and security expert in the United States Army. It's good to have you joining me right now. Thank you so much. Well, yeah. If you look at the issues of pipeline vandalism in Nigeria and how it has continued over time, how helpless is the Nigerian state in preventing this from happening at all? I think it has to be a point of priority. Uh, it has never been a priority of the government because, of course, the output has never really dropped. Uh, but if Shell is reporting 11,000 barrels per day, I mean, that's, that's huge. That's huge. And exactly. you know how much people are actually blind uh, the black market, you know. Uh, so in, in this sense, I will, I will suggest that they put up, you know, foot on the pedal and continue to put pressure and making sure that we cannot adequately secure these things, but at least, helping the community understanding that these are national assets. I mean, I've been to in some countries walk around the pipelines. I just don't, I mean, it doesn't even occur to me to even tamper with it because it's not even, it, first thing, this thing is dangerous. Yeah. You know, dealing with this kind of thing is quite dangerous. I mean, you require a lot of expert to actually, you know, kind of compromise the pipeline. So talk less of it, but it, it takes, so in part of the old security blanket, it has to, the old cultural reorientation needs to happen that this thing is a national asset. I understand that we've been marginalized into some of those areas, but at least, at least preserve some of these things. We okay. can continue to have problem on top of another problem. All right, there has been uh, the talk of illegal miners or illegal, uh, those who, who Ill illegal refiners rather, who yeah. refine crude oil in a very crude way. way yeah. And there was a talk, the vice president at the time on one of his visits to the uh, Niger Delta was talking about, you know, coordinating these people and make, forming them into a cooperative society and then putting them into the system for some kind of, uh, uh, you know, a li little micro, you know, refinery and all of that. How would that help? Uh, you know, I, I guess maybe he's probably made that suggestion from his own research, but when people, you already have that mindset of being black market, that what is already obtainable in a structured environment is not, in, is not enough for you, that you have to go be an outsider to actually gain, you know, you, whatever you need to gain over there. I don't think, from my perspective, I won't make such a decision because those people will always, you know, they're an outcast because they think differently. They will always come back, regardless of how much you want to. They always devise them a way to always go out against the system and figure it out again. So in as much as he wants to kind of make them inclusive and make in such a way that everybody has a buy-in into these all, you know, the halls are national assets. Some people just don't operate and see it that way. When it comes to uh, 
ensuring security for pipelines in Nigeria? What, what, what dimension do you think they should take? A lot of people have, um, you know, uh, kicked against the use of soldiers, the use of Navy uh, and all of that. But uh, without them, it's obvious, maybe the police and the civil defense are quite overwhelmed, especially the civil defense. Yes, they, I don't think none of those security agencies will actually work because, they, first of all, they are not trained in those those are infrastructures. There's no part of their own you know, job description. I've always believed we are tribals. We operate tribally. I mean, we have over 537 ethnic groups within Nigeria. We have always, indigenously, we've always operated in a communal way. So for this thing to happen, uh, the government has to develop the community, and the community has to take it upon themselves to secure those things. If not, there's no, I don't see any, any saving grace. All right. All right. Major Adebayo Adeleke, thank you so much for coming on the thank program. Thank you so much. Thank yes. you. Yep. Right.